We are blessed to be born in a country like India, which finds unity in diversity. Not only in religion, language, caste, but also in the context of food. As we move from the top, that is from Jammu and Kashmir to Kerala, we would find entirely different food taste and variety of dishes like from mouth-watering masala dosha, idli, biryani, dhokla, and to Kashmiri pulao. Our Indian food represents our tradition, our culture. And I'm damn sure that our Indian food are indomitable. That is, it can't be beatable by any other dish in the world. By this small intro, you must have guessed the chapter. Yes, exactly. Today we are going to deal with food and its sources. Good morning to all and I welcome all to this class. Actually, we all are eating food. All the organisms need food for their survival and growth. So food have different benefits like food protects us from diseases. It replaces our damaged cells. It helps in our growth and survival. So now we have to study from where does the, we get food. That is the sources of food. Mainly, we get food from plants and animals. As we all know, plants can prepare their own food. So, we call them as producers. But what about animals? Can they prepare their own food? No, they can't prepare their own food. They have to depend upon other organisms and plants for their food. So, we call them as consumers. And as I told earlier, the plants show the prepared food in leaves, stems, flowers, etc. So now we can see the food from plants in detail. First is food from roots. As we all know, there are some plants like carrot, turnip, beetroot, radish and sweet potato where the plants store their food in the roots. So we call them as modified roots. Okay? Coming to the next that is food from stems. Similarly, some plants like ginger, potato, turmeric store their food in the stem. So we call them as underground stems. Next is food from flowers. Cauliflower, broccoli and banana. These are the plants in which food are stored in the flower. Next comes food from leaves. It is very much familiar. We all know like spinach, cabbage, mustard and fenugreek. They store their food in the leaves. And mint and coriander which is used to make chutney in Indian foods. Next come food from fruits. So guava, mango and apple. Next is seeds. So here comes two things that is cereals and pulses. Oats, maize, wheat and rice. These are all cereals whereas kidney beans, black gram are pulses. Once again, maize, wheat, rice and oats. These are called as cereals whereas black gram and kidney beans are called as pulses. Next we can move to the food from animals milk egg meat fish honey these all we get from animals so we know that we get milk from cow goat buffalo so these animals we can tell commonly as milch animals milch animals that means the animals which gives us milk are known as milch animals there are some other products from milk we call them as dairy products like butter, paneer, cheese, curd and cream. Moving to the next one that is eggs. Hen and ducks lay eggs. We eat meat of duck, goat and chicken. Next is fish. We all eat fish. Commonly, people residing in the coastal areas feed upon fish. Next is honey. 
Bees collect the nectar from the flower and convert it into a thick liquid called as honey. Moving to the next topic that is classification of animals based on their food habit. Based on the food habit that means the food that the animals are eating we classify them as commonly as herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. But there are other three classification like scavengers, parasites and decomposers. So we can see herbivores in detail. Herb means plant and vos means eating. So herbivores means the animals which eat only plants like cow, deer, sheep, goat. So this type of animals have something special. That is they have a sharp cutting teeth in front of their mouth. And they have a grinding teeth at back of their mouth okay so these animals have a sharp cutting teeth in front and have grinding teeth at back whereas birds also eat seeds nuts and fruit so they have a hard and pointed beaks so that they can eat the seeds and nuts easily okay next comes butterflies and honeybees as they both feed on nectar they have proboscis proboscis means it's a mouth part such that they can suck the nectar easily okay coming to the next portion that is carnivores carnivores are the animals which eat flesh for example you can say tiger lion etc so what is special in them or what is the peculiarity the common feature is that they have a long and sharp pointed teeth so that they can tear the flesh easily what about frog and chameleons? They both eat insects so they have a long sticky tongue. Next is omnivores. Omni means both or all. So these are the organisms which eat both plants and animals. And the best example is humans. Coming to the next portion that is scavengers, parasites and decomposers. Scavengers means the animals which feed upon dead organisms. They eat dead and decaying organisms for example crow vulture and fox so in another way they clean our environment otherwise what will happen you know when the organisms are dead so there is a chance of foul smell but as they are dead scavengers come and eat them so there is not much foul smelling so next is parasites parasites means the organisms which depend either fully or partially to other organisms for their food okay so the examples are mosquitoes and leech next comes decomposers decomposers means the organisms which decompose dead organisms okay or we can say which break down dead and decaying plant and animal matter so these also clean our environment so the examples are bacteria and fungi i hope it is clear so i would give some questions to revise the first question is you have to explain in detail the classification of animals based on their food habit okay second question is you have to write food from plants and animals thank you so much for listening stay home stay safe